So we're here talking about the opioid epidemic, and I've got some really wonderful people here who are going to help educate us on some important facts for you to know for your teenager, your young adult, and as parents. So we're going to talk about how do people actually in high school start down the path of drug use. Well, I would say that you could see kids as young as sixth grade using these types of, uh, I guess you would call them narcotics or paraphernalia. And these would be the vape devices that a lot of people used originally to stop smoking. So right now, I would say in the high schools, in working in the high schools, this is the most common vape device that I have, and it's called the Juul. A small device that could be hidden literally anywhere. You can buy it at 7-Eleven. The kit would have the vape device, the battery charger, and four cartridges. Kids think it's the safer, healthier choice rather than smoking cigarettes or marijuana cigarettes. One of the most common drugs we see is marijuana and actually is a lot stronger than it historically has been. Correct. Today, marijuana dispensaries are growing marijuana plants and they're focusing on the high concentration of THC. So back in years before 2000s in the 1980s and 1990s, there was still a high concentration of THC, but today you see 50 to 60% higher concentration. In addition to the plants, the oils that are being created and the edibles have a severe higher concentration. THC vapes, they have about 80 to 90% higher concentration than that of a marijuana plant. When we see that, we see a lot of people falling out and passing out from the first time that they try hitting a, a THC vape. So it's very dangerous. Just parents just be aware to keep an eye on the marijuana because the THC is a higher concentration and we don't want to see any kids getting addicted or having any side effects from it. As if we haven't seen enough drugs tonight, we're now going to move on to the rave drugs. Correct. Yes, yeah, so if you um, see a, a generation of people who like to go to rave parties, different events that have a lot of music and flashing lights, these are going to be the drugs that you're going to see young adults using. And one of the common phrases is molly, and I'm sure you've heard of that term in songs. Um, it's a form of a drug called MDMA, it's a really long word. And the other drug that's very similar to molly that has the same drug in it is called ecstasy. Both of those types of pills are taken that affect all your senses, your sight, your sound, your touch. So when you go to a party and you see flashing lights, that affects their vision. With these drugs also, we might see sexual predators preying on young people because they do have more, they're more susceptible to being touched because they like that as, as a part of one of the side effects. Now cocaine is a more high-end version of that similar drug, correct? Well, cocaine is a, a, in its own drug category. Cocaine could be used in different ways, but a lot of people who have some money or, um, you know, it's more of a um, recreational drug, people will snort powder cocaine, but you can also use it in rock form where you smoke it as crack rock. So these are some drugs that are exposed uh, to people who have been exposed to different types of drugs, or they could just try these for the first time. So if you were going to talk to the high schools, which I hear you do often, what advice would you have for students and parents to help avoid getting this path? Parents, you're not your kids' friends. You're their parents first. Make sure that you talk to them about the dangers of vaping, the dangers of smoking. Make sure you look through their stuff. The stuff could be hidden in backpacks, in pockets, in drawers in their bedrooms. Conversation is always important. And again, you're not their friends. Look at their phones, know their passwords. Don't be afraid to look on their devices and look through their stuff. It's not theirs, it's yours, you pay for it. So remember that.